Oh my goodness. This is absolutely spectacular. Look at that. What do you think? Amazing. Whew. Look at this valley. It's never been this way when we've been through here before. It looks like Hawaii. We just rolled into camp. Wow, what a great evening. Uh, we just saw the most amazing um, rainbow and then a really beautiful lemony sunset. I've got one going on back here behind me. That's actually really good. Um, we just pulled over into a spot that we've hung out for lunch before. We haven't camped here, but it's pretty nice. We're up in the pines, up in some oaks and Probably, I don't know, five or 6,000 feet in elevation. What do you think, honey? What do I think about what? The spot. It'll do. Yeah. I mean, I think we knew what we were in for, right? It's yeah. It's sort of... A little bit rainy, a little bit buggy. Yeah, but it's first night camp, so mostly driving today. Yeah. It's a pretty good driving, though. We got out of town quick. Yeah. All right, y'all. Nighty night. Catch you in the morning. With this summer's record-breaking monsoon rainfall, the desert southwest has been alive with color. These are just a few of the wildflowers we experienced after waking up in this remote camp. After fueling up on coffee, we would continue a few miles up the road to the New Mexico border. This stretch of Highway 78 turned out to be one of the most memorable of the trip. We mentioned to each other how similar the rolling hills and the colors of the flowers along the road look like photos of Tuscany in Italy, another destination we hope to see sometime soon. Of course, no trip to Glenwood, New Mexico would be complete without a stop at Ruta's favorite skincare boutique, brought to you by Goat's Milk. All right, so we stopped in Reserve, New Mexico. It's a pretty funky little place. You can catch a bite to eat, do all sorts of fun stuff here pretty indicative of what you might see in some of these northern towns in Arizona or New Mexico. We've eaten at uh, this little cafe before, Ella's. Pretty fun and funky. But here we are at the Black Gold Emporium.
gas, groceries, video rentals, crafts, and gift items. This is why you stop in small towns. Check his rig out. Pretty sick. All right, so this is Uncle Bill's bar. Out where the West is. Oh yeah, Uncle Bill's. It's a little taste. It's a little taste. Just a few miles north of Reserve and we were back on dirt, entering the Apache National Forest. We're headed to Torlet Lake. <laughs> Torlet Lake, just Tor like my dad used to call it. Torlet Lake. Hopefully, it doesn't smell like a toilet. Like a toilet. Like a toilet. All right, let's see what we see. Oh my gosh, we just stopped in this spectacular field of wildflowers. Everywhere you look, something is blooming. It smells so good. Incredible. I love it. So wait, you're telling me that I was just standing in Torlet Lake? Actually, it's Toriad. <laughs> it's Toriad Lake, but you know, for our purposes, yes, it was Torlet. Torlet. So <laughs> that, sometimes it's a little hard to read the names. Out of that. Yeah, that beautiful meadow we were just standing in was actually a lake. These lakes are nothing like a Torlet. No, these lakes are nothing like a Torlet. They are like a dry. Lake bottom. Yeah, yeah. Not too sure. Yeah, see, here we go. Ooh, and there it is. There is the dry lake over there. It's very dry. Not at all like a lake. It's full of grasses, many, many grasses. Not at all like a lake or a toilet.
Further down the trail, we spotted some unique rock formations that looked promising as a potential campsite. Just found camp and wow is it a good one I'd say it's up there in the top 10 um, we have this really wide sweeping view of the valley behind me and then all of these really strange and wonderful elephant skin rock formations like this one behind me um, and the wildflowers are blooming and the vegetation smells like I don't know lemon balm or um, something really, I don't know, astringent and wonderful. Um, I feel like herbalists would really have a good time out here right now. Um, oh, I don't know if you could hear that. Uh, there is a storm brewing, I believe, to the east of us over that way. And uh, I don't know if we'll get hit, but it definitely is uh, very dark and uh, I can see rain falling, who knows? I'm not really worried about it. Um, but let me take you down to the camp. It's just right down here. Zach is setting everything up. And, uh, wow. It's pretty windy, as usual. Um, here's the camp. Some more really beautiful rock formations. I mean, Pretty ideal. I don't know if it could get much better, other than maybe somebody coming to make me dinner. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you later. I almost got struck by lightning. <laughs> <laughs> it was dangerous for a few minutes. It was dangerous for a few minutes. It seemed like Ruto was definitely going to get hit by lightning. <gasps> We're at this high point in these rocks, and yeah, it was kind of close. But there's a beautiful thunderhead behind us. I appreciate that. Pretty thundery. be one of my favorite things it's when you walk away do some filming come back and it's time to make the coffee things. What will I do? Alright, get ready to remove this tailgate cap and actually put in something that's functional. So, let me get started. Got a 
make sure you keep all this hardware because the other one doesn't come with any, so. I'm just gonna put these in my wine glass. Inner workings. Well, it looks like the good guys at State 48 Overland were happy to sell us this product. <laughs> it looks like it's going to fit the bill. It's just a powder coated aluminum plate that uh, goes right where the factory cap went. And it just goes down right there and slides in place into those factory hole locations. And look at that, everything's lining up really good. Yes. No more spilled milk or weird food particles getting down into the weird divots. All right, pack racks. Thank you so much. And to State 48 Overland who shipped this out to us. Thanks guys. It's really gonna make a difference. Oh, and by the way, it's the cleanest thing on this truck. Woo! Oh, oh damn it. Our travels through the forest would eventually lead us to the small town of Luna, population 158. This tiny dot on the map was primarily a sheep ranching community until it was settled by Mormons in the late 1800s. Luna was consistently under attack by the Chiricahua Apache until the surrender of Geronimo in 1886. right around 8,600 feet. And it's really hard to see, but behind me, it's National Forest, absolute beauty back there. Feel pretty lucky. We've seen a few people, um, but really, a great choice for this holiday weekend to come up into this part of New Mexico. Um, there's lots of really beautiful trails and you can stay in the lower elevations or you can come up way up into the high country and poke around. I'm really impressed with all of the wildflowers as well. Tons of wild cosmos and daisies and lupin and weird things. I, I don't even know what they are. But I really like some of this stuff right here. It's kind of like a fern, but not really. I think we're going to try to get down on one of my favorite rivers. It's called the Blue. Uh, and it kind of runs along the border of Arizona and New Mexico. And uh, I've done some backpacking in there. So I think we're going to go down there and explore and see what we can see. Maybe take a dip in the water. Um, oh, I just found an old can. 
and then maybe come back up into some higher elevations. The Blue River in Arizona runs from Alpine to the San Francisco River north of Clifton, about two hours drive from Tucson. It's one of our state's premier hotspots for trout fishing, holding both rainbows and brown trout if you're willing to pack up your gear and hike it in. Just pulled into camp, found a pretty decent little spot kind of on this promontory here and all these really beautiful mountains and rock formations. It's been a pretty great day. We've done some exploring. We went down to the Blue, um, to the Blue River and just looked at some stuff and then came back up into the higher elevations because it's much cooler here. So yeah, uh, we'll probably get a little bit of rain again, but no big deal. Very nice. Just uh, walking around looking at all the beautiful morning dew. What are you doing? Taking off my sexy gloves. Ooh, sexy gloves. That's right. Well, you want to blow this pop stand and go maybe look at something else? Let's bounce. All right. <laughs> So we have arrived in the ghost town of Mogion. It's not really a ghost town. Um, there are a few people living here. There's a cafe and a museum and um, I think a general store as well. Uh, I think this was founded in the mid uh, to late 1800s. And I wanna say copper but I could be wrong. There's a lot of silver in this part of New Mexico, as well as gold. So I'll try to see if I can maybe find a plaque or something. Right here is a little stream. All right, I'm gonna go check out that museum. So right now we're in the Mogollon Museum and Zach is looking at an old payroll book. From Socorro Mining and Milling Company in Mogollon. This is from October 1st to 15th, 1917. 1917, look at all these signatures. Somebody had some really nice handwriting. When Cursip was king. When Cursip was king, yes. All right, so this old guy is sitting on gold ingots. Yes, please. I'll take a gold ingot. All right, just leaving the museum. Um, so much history 
So many cool things to talk about. I'm gonna cross this little bridge right here. This is. Probably for water? I don't know. What does this say? Relic of the something when men were men, they brewed their own. Oh, ha! This is for beer. This would be our second time in the town of Mogollon, but this time, being able to learn about the history of the place and meet and talk with some of the locals made this visit much more enjoyable. It's truly a unique stop that we highly recommend. Check it out for yourself if you're ever in the area. the town of Mogollon. We made it up to this high point above town. It's kind of a nice perspective. The woman at the museum was saying that there are over 600 miles of tunnels throughout these mountains here. That's the road um, that you can take to come on down. Our Labor Day weekend was drawing to a close, so we pointed Pete in the direction of home. Once again, we had to stop and appreciate all the beauty and history we have just outside our doorstep. Until next time, stay safe when you're sleeping wild, and don't forget to subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching. A couple things you're going to need, kids, if you're back in the woods. <laughs> I was recording. Let's see. You're going to need to make sure you got some coffee to make sure you don't crash. We're going to get some adventure. Meow. And you're going to need some bug spray because of mosquitoes. They just aren't that nice. Eat a little food. Ah, bug in my eye. Ah.